So we got a lot to get through today and it's pretty much something that no one's talking about and that's the two Sony microphones. We've got the ECM S1, which essentially is this sort of streaming podcast microphone. Then you've got the ECM W3, which is these bad boys right here. This is essentially like the ECM uh, W2BT that they previously had, but it's smaller, there's dual transmitter, have a safety track, you can mix the tracks, separate the tracks. We've got a lot to get through, oh and obviously, Nice little charging case. We've got a lot to get through to talk about these two and see if they actually are good enough in 2023 because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of praise with 32-bit float these days and they don't have 32-bit float. So we're going to be talking about it. We're going to be talking about if you do need actually 32-bit float or is the 16-bit or 24-bit enough for you. What's going on, my friends? I hope you're all doing fantastic. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing today. We're going to be talking about these microphones and I really want to see if they are good or not. And obviously a disclaimer, Sony did send me these, but uh, I do have to send them back. So they are loan copies just to have a look at. They didn't tell me to make a video. I wanted to make a video because no one is making a video about these and I I'm really want to know why. And that's what we're going to be discovering today. Is it because they're not really that great? I don't know. Let's talk about it. So what do you think about the audio? We've got the ECM S1 right here compared to my Shure SM7B. Now the ECM S1 is wirelessly connecting directly to my A74, which through that accepts 24-bit audio. Whereas with my Shure SM7B, I've got it connected directly through to my Zoom F3, and that's 32-bit float. And 32-bit float is something that's going around uh, the world massively right now. It's, it's a big hype word, but do you actually need need 32-bit float or can you get away with 24-bit? And if you want to know the short answer, yes, you definitely can get away with 24-bit. We've been using 16 and 24-bit for absolutely ages. It is only just recently that a lot of these recorders and smaller devices are getting 32-bit float. And the most important factor when it comes to actually setting your audio device is obviously setting the correct levels because if you already have it extremely hot and have the levels already boosted inside your device, then you're most likely going to be clipping if someone's going to be talking loud. I guess that is the major pro when it comes to the 32-bit uh, float is that you can literally set it and forget it. So wedding filmmakers, this is incredibly important and extremely useful. But 24-bit audio is still very, very, very good because if you set it, let's say, to negative 8 or negative 12 decibels and someone gets a little bit louder and you have a safety track that's already recording negative 6 decibels below your set levels, you're still going to get that audio. I prefer to have a little bit of background noise and ambient noise as opposed to blown out audio. So it really does come down to setting your audio levels correctly. But what if I start yelling into the microphone and you don't have control over these audio levels? What does this actually sound like brought back in post? But what if I start yelling into the microphone and you don't have control over these audio levels? What does this actually sound like brought back in post? What if I start whispering? So I am literally whispering right now, and you will notice that the Shure SM7B has cleaner audio when I bring it up in post, as opposed to the ECM S1. What if I start whispering? So I am literally whispering right now, and you will notice that the Shure SM7B has cleaner audio when I bring it up in post, as opposed to the ECM S1. So as you can see in both of those tests, they both sound fantastic. They can handle it really well. It really does just come down to uh, proximity of that speech bubble is one of the main things. And obviously just setting the audio levels before you actually hit record. That is very important. And I definitely recommend just set it a little bit lower, bring it up in post, if you have to, but that safety track is there. But if it is 32-bit float, literally just set it, mic the person up correctly, and literally forget it. So there are pros with both of them, but absolutely nothing wrong with 24-bit as opposed to 32-bit. Now, the one big thing that I love about this microphone is that it's so small. 
It's so compact and it's wireless. That is a massive pro in my opinion, especially if you do want to just connect this directly to your camera. If you've got a traveling podcast and you don't want to have to, you know, bring a mixer and trying to record into that mixer or record into your laptop, you can literally record directly into your camera. But that doesn't mean you can't record directly into a laptop. So it's got a USB-C port you can actually attach uh, directly into your laptop and obviously use it as a live streaming thing, podcasting thing, and attach it directly into uh, your audio interface, which is amazing. Now, just like all the other Sony microphones, it also has that noise cut filter and low cut filter as well that you can choose from, but it really depends, same again, on your situation, if you're really going to be needing those. So now we're actually recording with this microphone set to just regular directional, and uh, you are pretty much gonna be capturing the audio coming from the front, and if I do turn it to the back, then obviously it's not gonna sound as good because it is turned to the back, and it should be capturing more of the front than it should at the back and now we'll switch it to omnidirectional which essentially will capture audio from the front and also capture audio from the back so this could be actually beneficial for people in a uh, podcast scenario if they want to sit it directly in front of two people and they speak into the same microphone now this next one is pretty much a stereo unidirectional so it does capture all around but it's more of a stereo mode so this could be quite useful in very similar situations to the last one but also more so ambient noises but what do these actually sound like? So the rest of the features on here is pretty basic. It does have a gain dial that pretty much goes from one all the way up to 10, which you can adjust obviously while you're using it. It does have that noise cut filter and low cut filter, just if you wanna try and adjust the noise and make sure you can optimize the audio quality. You can also monitor your audio through the headphone jack as well, which does have a gain dial on it. It does have an audio level on the side here, which you can actually see with different colors to see if you're actually going to be clipping your audio, which is great. And it does actually have a pause button on here on the side. If you do want to pause the audio that's going obviously directly into the microphone and obviously talk off camera or something like that. And it does come with this varying angle desk stand as well, or it does have a quarter 20 mount on the bottom, which you can mount it on a boom arm. Now, there are some clear differences between the ECM W3 and the ECM W2BT. Now, that comes down to size. They have reduced the size of this actual device, which I'll take out of the charging case. And you can actually see right here. I mean, look at the size of the device. It is relatively small. It's not crazy small, but still, it is much smaller than uh, the older version. Now, the reason why they did that is because a lot of people are actually physically still using these. So they'll have either the Rode Wireless Goes, or they'll have the DJI mics, and literally just wear them and have it in camera. A lot of people are not uh, worrying about it being in shot anymore. Even with you know putting the dead cat on top, people are still wearing it, and it doesn't really matter. And that's what you don't really want to be doing. When it comes to professional videos, you don't want to be able to see the microphone. So you generally attach a lav mic and attach it to the back of the pants or something like that, and then put the lav mic underneath the shirt and just attach it there so you can't really see it. But uh, I've got these microphones side by side. So I've pretty much got the, uh, the brand new W3 attached into the a 74 and I've got the older W2BT attached into my ZV-E1 over there. So what do you guys think of the audio quality? Is there a significant upgrade between the new one and the old one is there going to be a reason for you to upgrade if you've already got the older one I mean if you need the two transmitters I mean potentially it could be a really decent upgrade there is that safety track as well and uh, there is just more flexibility to utilize something like this so what do you guys think all right, so with this test, I wanna see what the transmission uh, is going to be like. So not the distance, mainly the transmission strength. So going through walls. So I've got uh, both of these microphones with the W3 and the older uh, W2BT uh, recording side by side. So you can pretty much hear both of these audios and see if they're gonna be dropping out, you know, shooting through walls, all those kind of things. And that's what I personally like uh, to see in microphones is, the strength and the quality when it comes to you know walls and objects those kind of things distance for my work doesn't really worry me i'm not usually filming a hundred meters away from the camera 
I'm filming with things in between me and the camera, and so my talent and the camera. So we'll head downstairs and see what it's gonna be like, you know, filming through walls, trying to get this transmission nice and strong through walls. So we're just heading out, uh, obviously downstairs, and uh, we're pretty much filming through one wall and a floor. Uh, what's the transmission like? So this is, I guess, technically below the room. Uh, we'll head directly into the garage and see what it's like. So this is pretty much the biggest test right now. You know, heading into the garage, you can see super dark. You probably can't see me, but you know, are you able to hear me nice and clearly? So this is what I want to know. The clarity uh, and the strength of this signal going through walls. That is the biggest thing. Has it dropped out? Uh, is the W3 stronger than the W2BT? Uh, it should because it's a newer device, but it really depends on obviously the internals and you know, have they improved the transmission between the two? And was the W2BT already quite strong when it comes to the transmission? So back into the room and obviously you're gonna see me right here. What do you guys think? Now, why did they upgrade this? What are the differences? They still connect directly into your multi-interface hot shoe, which is incredible. It means it's completely wireless. You don't actually have to, you know, attach it directly into your microphone jack, which is great. It's passed through power as well, so you don't have to charge that at all. But obviously, these ones you do have to charge, but you do have a charging case, which is amazing. But also, the new ones have that noise cut filter or noise cancelling filter and a low cut filter. So you can choose one of the two just to try and cut a little bit of noise out of uh, your audio. And it really just depends on the different situations that you're in. Now they have kept obviously your 3.5 audio jack on top. So if you do want to attach a lav mic directly into it, you still can. But the one thing that they haven't done still is a locking connector. So it doesn't have a locking 3.5 uh, jack there. So you can't actually get one of those microphones and completely lock it out. So there is that potential of it still pulling out, which is a bit of a con there. But you definitely can see on the top of the new microphone with the W3, there is a larger microphone capsule on the top, whereas this, uh, the older one, the W2BT, is a very, very small uh, opening of that capsule, which I guess could have a lot to do with the audio quality being enhanced in the newer version. Now, when it comes to the receiver, one of the major changes happens to be separating the clips or obviously mixing them together. And that happens to come down to there being dual transmitters. Now, the older version was a single transmitter. So you actually had to, unfortunately, just mic one person up if you had dual uh, people talking. But now you do have two transmitters, which is absolutely fantastic and very, very handy in uh, situations where either you're micing yourself up or you've got two, two talents in front of the camera. That is really cool and you can separate that. And one of the major things about this new one as well is you can record a safety track. And a lot of these devices are coming with that safety track. So it really does give more versatility to 24-bit audio because you do have that safety track. So essentially the safety track records six decibels lower than the main track. So you are already capturing more details in the lower end. So if you do end up clipping, that's gonna be fine because you got that second track that you can actually switch to which can make things so much easier and literally save the job now just like the older one this one does have the ability to switch to analog so if you don't have a camera that has the multi interface hot shoe you can still attach this directly into your 3.5 audio jack um, and go through the analog way as opposed to that digital multi interface hot shoe so now when it comes to internal recording, unfortunately, uh, the podcasting microphone doesn't have internal recording. I ex fully expect that. I don't expect there to be internal recording on this one, but the W3, the ECM W3 doesn't have internal recording. Now I know a lot of their competitors do have about six to eight gigabytes internal storage. So let's say the transmission does drop out. You've still got that internal recording. So literally this transmitter, you know, is attached to you and you completely drop out or it starts to jitter a little bit for some sort of interference, you're gonna still get clean audio into this, but Sony haven't added that. So I know a lot of people aren't going to like that. And to me, that is a little bit of a con with that. 
So my friends, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I really want to know your thoughts on these uh, microphones. And I want to know your thoughts on why isn't anyone talking about these microphones? Um, are they good enough? Is that why people aren't talking about it? Let me know in the comments below. See you in the next one. Let's get it.